Hi, this is Tali and welcome to BuildRoo.com. I'm here at the 2009 Green Build Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'm standing with Catherine from Autodesk, and she's going to talk to us about their BIM software and some of its sustainable features. So Catherine, how are you? I'm really well. Thank you very much. So today, what uh, Michael is going to show us on the screen here starts with our core authoring tool for BIM, Revit, and actually Michael is showing Revit MEP today. The information in the building information model is what is key. Information allows you to do the analysis, the simulation, visualization that's key to good sustainable design practices. So Michael, why don't you give us a start? Sure. What we're, what we're looking at here is Autodesk Revit MEP 2010, and the building type that I have loaded here is a, is a school located in California. So key to the workflow is early analysis. What we want to do is we want to study this existing project for energy analysis and energy consumption. So real quickly, what we've done is we've modeled this building in Revit, just a real simple schematic analytical model. And what we're going to do is we're going to export this model out to a GBXML file format. Now think of GBXML as an intermediary between CAD and modeling to analysis. So once you have that GBXML file, you can do a whole host of different analysis what-if thinking. So the workflow that we're going to show today is from Revit, the authoring tool, to our online product, which is Green Building Studio, which is software for a service. It's a web-based analytical design tool. So once I have this GBXML file, the, the options and the opportunities are, are, are limited. So what I'm going to do is quickly export that out. And you can see you can actually quality control this, this model before you export it. So real quickly, we can see that this is the lightweight analytical representation of that school. And quickly walk through the different surfaces and just QA this thing before you export it. So I did this beforehand, and I've uploaded this file to Green Building Studio. So now we're looking at the web the web tool, Green Building Studio, and I'm going to log in to this site. And real quickly, so I've lo I'm actually logging into a server farm in California right now where sitting on those servers are a bunch of very sophisticated analytical tools, Do2 and eQuest and a few other tools. And you can see that I've loaded up that school retrofit project on onto this website and I've done a run. So I've, I've uploaded that GBXML file format, and now we have some results about that project. So that software reports a bunch of statistical information about this project onto this very easy to understand and easy to, to collaborate kind of environment on the internet. So you can see real quickly, we've got a bunch of tabs across the top, which are about carbon and energy, about water usage, about PV, about lead daylight credits, and all this information, all this analysis is based on an accurate weather file. So in this case, this, we've actually picked a weather station in Los Angeles to, to generate and, and back up this analysis. So take a look. At a very early stage, my whole design team can start thinking about energy use. So this is a schematic idea, this baseline building is going to cost us about $142,000 a year to heat and cool. So the goals for this project, the goal for this early workflow is to reduce that. So what we can do actually is, is do some design alternatives on this conceptual model and fold in different ideas. I can modify the HVAC system, pick a different package, I can modify in this conceptual environment, I can modify the lighting efficiency and lighting control. You know, what if what if we add occupancy sensors and daylight daylighting controls into this building? What will, what will happen? How how will the, the needle move? Will we save money? What what's the life cycle kind of analysis of this idea? So what where this is really interesting is the whole design team is collaborating on these blends of options and understanding how it affects the bottom line, the energy use. So just a real quick overview, you can, you can iterate on wall construction, roof construction, you know, how much insulation is actually the ideal insulation. You can over-insulate. So this will allow you to optimize uh, building components and systems. So what's really exciting about Green Building Studio today is it offers one of the largest weather databases in the world. 
Weather data is typically used in engineering and energy analysis is typical meteorological year weather data. That data can be several decades old and as you know the planet is warming and weather is changing. So most people get their weather data from airports and if we look at your location in Berkeley, California, you know the weather is much different there than it is at San Francisco Airport. What Green Building Studio does is draw on 1.6 million weather stations around the world and enable folks to locate their project within eight kilometers of virtually any location. So you get accurate local weather data and you can make better decisions with better information. And once you've completed your run using this accurate local weather data, you get real information that you can act on. For example, you'll understand where your energy use comes from, so better understanding of your carbon footprint. You'll understand um, your potential for natural ventilation, renewable energy sources, energy use, and, and start to get an idea of what the potential is for improvement on these things. And again, accuracy is, here is key because if you make the right choices early, your building will be more sustainable, more energy efficient over the long term. Okay, Catherine, thank you for talking to me. Thank you very much. This is Tali from Builder.com reporting to you from the 2009 Green Builds Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for watching.